Welcome back to Geelong and The Daily Show. It's a cloudy day today, but we're gonna kick this off with a discussion about uh, female coaches in Olympic sailing. The reason why we started to talk about this was I was talking to Joe Alley on my left, and she was saying that in Aarhus, there was, usually, there was just about only one female coach there. That was a world championships in what year? Uh, we're 2018? 2018. 2018. <laughs> and now here we are in Geelong, for the 2020 Worlds, and there are just about, or, you know, probably almost 10 female coaches here. So we're going to explore how that even happened, you know, in a, such a short period of time when you go from basically no female coaches in Olympic sailing to to almost 10 and probably growing. So we'll start on my left. We have Jenna, and we have Joe Alley, and we have Francesca. What's your last name? Klapčić. Klapčić. Jenna May Hansen and Sally Barkow. So we'll start this off with Joe because you know you and I were discussing this. You brought it to my attention when we were talking about it, and you also said that a, a woman sailor came up to you and just was really interested in coaching. Maybe she hadn't seen someone in that role before that was a female. So explain to me about that opportunity. Yeah, so been up here in Geelong for a little while, and just in our first training block, I had a few girls actually just come up and say, you know, oh, how do you find the coaching, and how did you get into it? And that was really cool because. I think that's just showing that it's actually a possible career path and it's a step you can take when you finish sailing and it's sort of becoming, I guess, normalised. And that's all we sort of want. Is that, oh yeah, you're coach, you're a chick, it doesn't matter, you're just a coach. How did you get into coaching? Like, did you... Um, I sort of... Did it fall into your my way in? No, yeah. I fought my way in to begin with. <laughs> there was a young 470 team in New Zealand that needed some help and no one was giving them help and so I just was like, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And eventually was like, oh yeah, okay, you, you. Yeah, yeah, why not? Cool. And then obviously the NACRA role came up and I put my name forward for that and sort of pushed for that a bit and went through a trial process. And yeah. And, that was and, it. and Jenna, you and I talked about the idea that, you know, how you became a coach. Yeah. And maybe explain a little bit about that because it, it ties it to the actual Olympic class, this newer Olympic class. It does, yeah. Well, obviously we see all these guys or men coaches here that <coughs> sailed the 49. I'm maybe when it started 20 years ago, and they're still here coaching the 49er because that's what they know about. So, well, I got into the Olympic sailing when the FX got on the program, and I felt like it was very natural when I stopped that I wanted to give something to other people that wanted to sail the FX because that was what I know about. I've never sat in a laser before, so why should I go and try and do that? And uh, this is my passion, and I want to do this. So it's very natural for me to choose this path to go into coaching after sailing. So that's what I did after I stopped the at the world in 18 in Aarhus so and I was lucky enough that my federation also saw it as a good asset to have me on the team. Awesome now we look back the women's sailing has been in the Olympics since 88 that was only one class uh, but then we have laser radio, windsurfing <coughs> etc. Sally why do you think it's taken this long because there are other women that have been you know many many women that have been campaigning over the years why has it taken this long for women to really take the or either grab the opportunities to start coaching in the last like year or two? You know, I think it's a good question and I don't know the full history of how many women female coaches have been throughout the whole history of Olympic sailing, but right. I know <laughs> that there has been some that kind of have the same emotion and want to really give back to the sport. It's what they know. It's a good career path if you, you know, if you want to spend a lot of time away from home and <laughs> and, and, give, <laughs> and give back to the sport mm -hmm. and, you know, give your knowledge out there to make a team better. Um, you know, right now, I think maybe we're seeing a little bit of evolution in kind of an era. We're all around similar ages. We've come from similar time in sailing where it's trying to become more normal that women are, this is their career, you know. And, um, you know, for me, I've done a lot of different types of sailing and came back to the Olympics as, okay, this is something that I can kind of settle down in one part, part of the sport to give back to. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if there's a perfect answer besides that, Maybe we are seeing a little bit of shift in, you know, where, you know, where the athletes are getting to after they're done and like how much they want to give back and the equalization or the normalization of like, it doesn't really matter if you're a male or a female when that happens and you have a chance to go and make the rest of it your career. Awesome. And as far as like leadership goes, do you see more and more women at like the U.S. Sailing Leadership Conference and any other thing associated with, with coaching really? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the conference just happened last week. I wasn't there, but, you know, we have the female president of U.S. Sailing, Corey Sertle, and she's, you know, made a really good push to engage more women in our sport, in our country, and 
has a lot of supporters because of that and we're just we're seeing a shift it's not an overnight shift but it's um you know there's a lot of women's coaching support happening in the u.s as well with different um conferences and and clinics to upskill them so there's there's a lot of little pockets of things that are happening and you know i think the more that that you know takes precedent the more we're going to see this change evolve right and then the more visible you are which you are highly visible individuals now at these events um like you saw if a, if a woman sailor sees her sees herself in you maybe that's something that i'd like to do which before you would see dave allman or chris nicholson or whoever these coaches are you just see them so that makes sense for me because i can see myself there even though i'm not as good as those guys are <laughs> and francesca how about i mean Sally alluded, it's a great job if you want to be away from home a lot. Um, <laughs> the, the, the one, Why are you doing me <laughs> this question? The, 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 one, the one thing that, um, again, seeing yourself, you know, in, in a position, uh, just give us like a, a year in the life, you know? Is it really an awful lot of time away from home and living yeah. out of your bags? And... I mean, I think we are all really used to do this life because we were doing before as an athlete right. and we are keep doing as a coaches, so... It's also the understanding of we are pretty young, all of us. So I think it's also the understanding of what we were doing just a few years ago and what our athletes, our guys are trying to do now. And I think that makes everything a little bit more close. You can like, you can be part of the team and they know that you understand what they want to achieve, what they want to do. And I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, my first reason not to, it's not just to spend a lot of time away from home. I, I, I kind of like to be home too, but uh, yeah. And I think I agree with like with all of you guys. And I think one good point is like, we are getting more experience also outside the Olympic stuff. Like Yena and Sally did the last mobile and uh, we bring back in the Olympic classes something that a few years ago was not there. Right. So it was a bit more like, oh, okay, like, you know, a few women sailing like 470 because yeah. it was the only option, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. years ago. And now there are women, women out there sailing whatever you want to say, you know, from around the world to Olympic classes, win medals or big boats, maxis. Mm -hmm. And you bring back that experience and, and actually like, your clients that are the athletes can see that and a few years ago they could see that just in other men's because the opportunities out there are, were not the same as now awesome and uh, we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up a little bit but at, looking to the future you know uh, Tommy Burnham from Sail GP he was the Artemis coach as well he's a really good friend of mine so I followed you know he's a good example of, of just coaching in general and in professional sport um, looking to the future and you mentioned clients do you all um, consider this maybe, you know, just the beginning of a career or you don't know yet, Jenna? I don't know yet, but yes, I, all I ne ever known <laughs> nearly is sailing. I've done it since I was five, so uh, why not? I think I have a lot of knowledge to give mm -hmm. to other people, so, uh, and I'm willing to do it, so <laughs> why not? I'm willing to learn still, because that's the beauty about sailing. You learn so much every day. and. Uh, yeah, I think this could definitely be a career path for the future. Awesome. How about you, Joe? Yeah, I mean, I've found the learning part of it amazing as well. Obviously, I'm coached to get a different class than what I sailed. I've right. sailed a knacker a few times, but you know, <laughs> the sailors know how to sail it better than I do. But I'm learning every day. And the skill of coaching is such a different skill to performing yourself. You know, it's how to get the best out of other people. And there's so much room for, for learning and growth in that that it makes it quite exciting. Really. Awesome. And Sally? You do, you're the new head of uh, head coach for the U.S. sailing team. Well, so. something like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> not quite, but uh, you yeah. can only look not too far out at the moment. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, we're already thinking about 2024 and 2028. Yeah. So, you know, I think my career choice has probably always tried to think that there was something else besides sailing, but the reality is I'm stuck here. So, <laughs> uh, I, that, right? <laughs> yeah, you know. I do love the sport. I love giving back. I love seeing it grow and planning it in a way that's really efficient and helping the athletes. So that's cool. why I'm here. And Francesca, just Olympic sailing or mm, you're well, interested in coaching? All, yeah, all um, I mean, I'm still learning this. Right. Uh, it's something that I started coaching this not, yeah, one year ago. Right. And, uh, it's so different the point of view and also how you need to like the perspective is different. It's not about you anymore. It's all about 
the people that you're coaching is giving them 100% of your energy and like it's, it's different like I would love to sail more yeah. still yeah. that's a tricky <laughs> I, one right yeah <laughs> I feel <laughs> I still feel that I still want to do something also for myself right. and right. you know have different projects but uh, I love coaching and I love to learn every day like looking from outside so different like compared to when you watch it sail the boat and yeah sometimes I'm like oh coming back now and effects maybe I, I would know how to do this better <laughs> but it's uh yeah it's so nice also to see like yeah your guys growing and every day making little steps and making maybe make them getting closer to their goals so, awesome yeah. and last question can you get like really wealthy coaching Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing well. <laughs> do we, do I've got no. <laughs> okay. Well, that's an answer. <laughs> so that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you do it for the love. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on this topic. Um, and I knew you'd be great. <laughs> so that's it for now. Uh, we're into the Gold Fleet Racing, and we'll just look forward to the next daily show. Thanks so much for watching.